Hey guys, Techno How back at you with another video. Today we have the ZTE Blade Vantage available on Verizon prepaid for $49.99 sub $50 smartphone. And I'm curious to see what all it offers, what all it has to pack into it, which I already know, but I'm gonna let you guys know. And without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the full review of the ZTE Blade Vantage. So let's go ahead and get the specifications out of the way just because it's something I like to do quickly and always do first in my videos. So you have a five inch display here. It's 480p display. It's got 196 pixels per inch. Like I said, it's a, it's an, it's a extremely budget device. It's called an ultra budget device actually. 2500 milliamp hour removable lithium ion battery got the qualcomm snapdragon 210 2 gigabytes of ram 16 gigabytes of internal storage expandable up to 256 gigabytes via the micro sd card slot um, it does have a removable back uh, it's got the adrena 305 i believe in it and that gives you a very good battery life. So the very first thing that I really like about the phone is the battery life. But before we jump into all that, let's go ahead and look at the outside and the build quality. Let's talk about it a little bit. It is all plastic, but it looks like the ZTE Blade Z Max on the back. The same kind of, uh, it look, except for it really is textured like the ZTE Blade Z Max looks like it is. It's very, very grippy. It's got a nice weight to it. It's not too heavy. It's not too light. And it all in all, it's a really great feeling device in the hand. It's kind of thick, um, but not too thick. And it does look, it has these rounded edges here that make it feel a lot more narrow than it is. Although it's not a very wide device in the first place. And you can use the device with one hand um, most of the time. You know, texting is no problem with one hand. Sending emails, no problem with one hand, anything like that. So you do have a two megapixel front facing camera and then your earpiece on the front here. Up top you have, right there you have your little uh, microphone up there up there at the top it's kind of hidden in the black I'm not sure you can see it really well down at the bottom kind of classic ZTE back home recent running apps capacitive touch buttons on the right hand side you have your volume up volume down rockers and your powered button that is textured Let's see if I can't get a little better picture of that for you and the only thing I can say about those buttons is they're not very clicky, but you, you're never going to think that you're going to turn the volume up, volume down and wind up turning the you know phone off. Uh, the power button is textured and I've had no issues with it so far while using it. On the back, you do have an eight megapixel rear facing camera, your LED flash, and then my second favorite part of the whole entire phone, this speaker right here. And we'll get into that in just a minute. So it does come running Android 7.1.1 Nougat out of the box. So let's jump into settings and just confirm that for you. Go down here to about phone. And that was the very first time I'd seen any lag on this phone whatsoever or any stutter. Uh, Android 7.1.1. And then it does have the um, uh, August 1st, 2017 security patch. It is fully updated. I updated it when I before I did the review now I haven't charged it since I did the unboxing and I've been using it playing games uh, watching YouTube di doing different things finding out how it works and I've still got 23% battery so the processing unit and the G GPU combined together to with the low resolution display which is 480p to give you a very good battery life on this device so Back to the settings menu, one more feature I want to talk about in here and then we're going to talk about the things that I really like about the device and the things that I don't like so much about the device. But you do have the ability right here under display to of course change your, um, change your back and recent running apps buttons to from left to right if you want to the home button always stays the same and the home button is also your pulse notification light so it's really nice that they included a pulse notification light on a sub uh, 50 dollars smartphone as well as the ability to change those buttons around there's not a whole lot of customizability to this 
phone out of the box, but you can always download a third party launcher like Nova Launcher or something. And I've done it, I uninstalled it, it does run it well. Uh, but for the review, I wanted to have it look how it does, you know, basically stock. So, okay, so about the display, five inch display, right? And it is not the highest quality display, it does have color shifting you know, at different angles. So it's not going to be the best device in the world for watching uh, Netflix or watching YouTube. I mean, YouTube is fine, but you know, if you're watching movies or something on it, it's not going to be the best for that. But this speaker, man, if you like music and you listen to music on your phone a lot, this speaker is crazy. Let's open up YouTube and I've got this non-copyrighted music that I want to play for you guys. So just hear this speaker and then I'll bring it up to the uh, microphone so you can hear it even better. But let's go ahead and just hit play. And now let me bring it up to the mic. And then that gives you an idea of what you get with the uh, 480p screen as well. But just music just sounds amazing on this speaker. This speaker here is just great. And now I understand why it's so thick because they put a lot into that speaker. Bass is on par. Uh, the loudness is on par. It doesn't get tinny or anything as you, you know, turn the volume up. It sounds really, really nice. So if you like listening to music on your on your smartphone, or if you work like construction or something, you can take this phone, just sit it down on a table like that, um, let it play, or not table, you know, or your work site, wherever. Just let it play, and it's going to fill up the room with sound, which is kind of amazing for a forty-nine dollar device. Next, let's jump into the camera application here. And the camera is probably my second favorite. Hi guys, I'll take this shot right here. And then we will post that for you. But the camera is probably my second favorite uh, thing about this device. Let me go ahead and bring out my Moto Z. And then I'm gonna snap a picture of it and I'll post it. And then let me take the cover off the back cover off and I'll take another another picture of it for you and I'll post that as well and then just for some color reference let me bring out a microfiber cloth and then the wood grain take one more picture for you and I'll post it okay so that's all the pictures I'm gonna take and I'll post a couple more at the end of the video if you want to stay tuned to the end of the video to see some of the other pictures that I've taken selfies and just pictures from like outside and whatever um, but the camera I don't know why I closed it inside the camera application here it does shoot video at 720p uh, you do have different filters you can choose from if you want to take pictures so that's always nice and then you do have a manual mode and it's a full manual mode where you can adjust the exposure, the white balance, um, basically everything, your ISO, and anything that you need for full manual control over your camera is right there. Under photo, if you click this little three dot menu there, you get access to your panorama, multi-exposure, and time-lapse options, which is nice on a, on a budget device to see that. So if you jump into the settings of the camera, you don't really have much to choose from. You can choose your video quality, either 1280 by 720 or 320 by 240 for multimedia um, messages or whatever. You can choose to geotag your um, videos. Uh, you know, you can choose where to save your video if you want to save it to your SD card or internal storage. And that's really about it as far as the video settings go other than the manual mode that you do get. And then in photo, you get a couple of settings here. You do have high dynamic range, but you can change the resolution of your photos and you can see the different options that you have there. You can take a photo with your volume key. Of course, you can tag your location, change your save location, and all of the features that you would normally get with a uh, device. So you also can set a timer to take a picture and you do have high dynamic range if you need it. That's really about it as far as the camera goes. 
So the camera application and the camera on this, this eight megapixel camera is actually really, really nice for $49. And um, the selfie camera as well is kind of nice. So $49, ultra budget smartphone. What does that get you? It gets you great battery life. It gets you a phone that if you drop it, it's not going to break the you know the first time you drop it. I just it's not. I can tell just by the way that it's built that it's not going to break if you drop it. You get a removable back that you can take off, which will give you access to your uh, battery, so you can replace it as well as your micro SD card slot and your expandable uh, and your SIM card tray under there. I don't know guys, $49, I think this one here is a win. Like the uh, Sony Xperia L1, $179, and you didn't get a fingerprint sensor, which you don't get on this either, but you do have your basic pin pattern, uh, password, swipe, and none as your unlock options. But, you know, swiping through the home screen on the Sony Xperia L1 just felt really sluggish and slow, and on this device, it doesn't feel sluggish or slow at all. Uh, gaming is okay. Like you can do Clash Royale, uh, no problem. I think with higher graphically intensive games, it's going to be a problem. But web browsing, no problem. Facebook, no problem. Instagram, no problem. Twitter, no problem. Sending emails, things like that, no problem. Listening to music, an absolute joy. And uh, overall, I think that it's a really, really good device. Uh, especially for the price. ZTE is known for making really great budget devices. Um, would have been nice to see USB Type-C, but I mean, for the price, I can't complain. There's nothing I can really complain about this phone about other than the display. That's the, that's the weakest area of the whole entire phone is the display. And it's still not terrible. It just has that color shift. And, you know, if you're looking at it straight on, it looks nice. Colors look okay. Let's change up the background here. Um, change the wallpaper to something else. And then click home screen and just go back home, I think. Yeah. So, you know, colors are vibrant and everything until you start to change the direction that you're looking at it. And then you get that color shift. But for $49.99, Plus you get Verizon's network. I mean, I don't, it's a win. So that about wraps up my whole entire review, my full review of the ZTE Blade Vantage. If I left anything out that you wanted to know about, leave it down in the comment section below and I'll be sure to answer that for you as soon as I can. As always guys, I just want to take a second to thank each and every one of my subscribers, each and every one of the people that view my channel. I got hit with that email uh, yesterday letting me know that I'm no longer going to be able to monetize my videos unless I hit a thousand subscribers and a few more hours of watch time in the next 30 days. So if you're not subscribed already, help a guy out, hit that subscribe button. Guys, if you are subscribed already, like this video, share this video, comment on this video, and let's help try to get this channel up to that 1,000 subscriber mark. I've got 29 days left, and I know we can do it if we all work together. I do appreciate each and every one of you. As always, guys, it's Tech Know How. I hope you have a great day today, and I'm out of here.